Is everybody ready? Because it's extremely hot, and I hope that you survive this next 20 minutes. Um, you can't close your eyes because I have 100 slides. <laughs> so please stay awake. Um, Francois asked me, can you tell a story about business models beyond profit? And then I was sketching this weekend, and then I was bored, and then I was sketching this. And then I thought, like, yeah, actually it's about business models. It has something to do with profit, but maybe not. So I will tell you a little bit about uh, business models, about business models beyond profit today. And I'm one of a twin, and so if you've seen me before, I could be my twin brother. But my mom didn't know, so she was on a big diet, and then uh, I came out as well. So she said, you are the most ugly guy I've ever seen, so I think she's right. Then this is uh, Alex Osterwald, he's the author of the book. I work closely with him, he's from Switzerland. And I am the producer of this book, because we produce this book ourselves without any uh, publisher. Why? If you want to make a serious book on business models, you need to take yourself serious and not come up with the traditional model. Um, I'm a son of a funeral director, and um, I did five years of service as a student. And this was a movie, but uh, I did this work actually in practice. I learned a lot. But the, I'm always passionate about business models, because I'm always, I always like to know how companies make their money. And finally, we put the model together to understand how companies make money. And I'm CEO of Business Models Inc. I finally have my international model agency. Yeah. But that was me. But what is actually a business model? Well, you see that if you talk about a business model, a lot of people are talking about revenues, about pricing, and all these kind of things. So you see that you need to have a definition to start talking about the same topic. So here you see what is very important, that we have a common language to talk about business models. And here you see the business model canvas. That's what Alex Osterwalder came up with. He studied business models in 2004, put it on the web, and shared it with everyone. Then I saw it. I called him in 2008. I said, are you happy to share this with our clients in Holland? And then Alex said in 2008, no, I'm not interested because we work in private banking and we make a lot of money, still in March. Then I invited 40 people over and they came from all over the world. And they paid 800 euros and they said, I would like to hear your story about business models. And then after that uh, moment, he said, I'm going to put this book together. But what is this business model about? Well, actually, this canvas explains how you can describe, challenge, design your own business model in a sy systematic way. So it's based on nine building blocks, and of course it starts with the client. So you can sketch your business model for your company on one A4, or a bit bigger here. So who is my customer? Very important question. The other thing is that, but what am I offering to this customer? What is it that I do for him? Then the question is, how do I reach him if I deliver the product or if I communicate with him? And the other thing companies don't have is a relationship with the clients. If they don't buy anything, do you still maintain a relationship? And then you see the revenue streams come in. So if you've been doing this, does it bring in any money? So this is the left-hand side of the model. Then the other side, you need to have resources in order to make it work. You also need to perform activities in order to make it work. And what you see more and more, you guys know in IT that it doesn't make any sense to develop things your own or yourself if other companies already developed it. So here you can work with partners on your business model. And of course, that has a cost to it. So this is the business model canvas. And if you put it together like this, you can create with your colleagues uh, your own business model. Well, I see everyone yawning, so let's get some examples. Uh, these are companies that are already work with the model. So at that point in time, Alex also said, it's interesting to put something together for these companies and for these people. But I was actually wondering, what does beyond profit mean? And I thought, what you see more and more, that people say it's not about profit anymore, but also this profit really must have a purpose. So it's not about profit making money for your shareholders, but is there another purpose? And if you look at old school not-for-profit organizations, they are subsidized, they have like a high social impact potential, but they don't make any profit. If you see, look at other companies nowadays, the regular company, the old school corporation, they have profit potential, 
but less social impact. And of course, in this area now you see a new school of entrepreneurs. It's fun because um, we did a speech in the UK and you see a lot of people are in this area. They say, yes, we want to make profit, but yes, we want to do something different and we want to do something good. So are there examples in the market nowadays where we see this type of business? So let's see. Does anyone know Spotify? Yeah? So what is Spotify? These guys are from Sweden and nobody knows, but this technology was developed by someone, uh, Lodde, and he is disabled until here. And he came up with the code for Spotify. And what is Spotify about? Actually, you can go to this website and you can stream all the music that you like, you can play it for free. But if you don't want to listen to advertising, what they play in between, then you pay like five euros in the Netherlands for, uh, per month. <coughs> so this is how it looks like. And then we thought, let's draw it, how this business model would look like. So what you see here is actually free streaming music. And they offer it to young people through the laptop or uh, uh, PC or with a mobile device. But if you offer something for free in your model, someone has to pay. So here is the advertiser. And what does the advertiser get? He gets mood-based advertising. Meaning if you play Metallica, you have a different mood than <laughs> playing other stuff. And here you see it's for free, but they pay advertising. So uh, the most important thing is why they are successful is that they have contracts with the record labels, so it's completely legal. So the question is, is this business model beyond profit? Yes? So is it beyond profit? No. They don't make any profit, so it has nothing to do with profit yet, but they try to connect to the US market. But it's not that they want to do something good or something special. Another example. FIFA. <laughs> now the Dutch will be out also on Friday night, but I thought like, how does the model of FIFA look like? We first th thought of the World Championship, but actually there are three models. One is FIFA, it's all about licenses. The other one is the World Championship country who's hosting, South Africa. And you have a company, of, or sorry, a country that joins. But let's look at the this model of FIFA. Actually, what they say is we for the game and for the world. So what they offer is all kinds of things. They have their licenses. They offer marketing services for big advertisers, sponsors. They offer broadcast services for TV stations. They have a ticket fund for people who voluntarily contributed to the FIFA in uh, South Africa. And they help like local soccer clubs and teams in order to develop soccer in the world, in the more poor and underdeveloped countries. And does anyone know how much revenue they made last year without the World Championship? Four billion. And here you see what they need to do. Like they have a TV sales and distribution company, they have a TV division, they have cheap soccer players. They, they pay them $1,600 uh, a day. Um, for the world championship. So that's their business model. So is this business model beyond profit? Yes? Yes? Why? Yeah, actually, yes, they do good. Um, but <laughs> I show you another model. What happens here? Do you see these two ladies? This Bavaria beer brand, they developed an orange shirt, skirt. And these girls were wearing it in the stadium and they were put in jail because it was from a different beer brand than the sponsor. So I was talking to Francois today and Francois said, well, actually, I said, maybe this is not for beyond profit. And he said, no. But I think, yes, they do good and they make my, uh, profit with a purpose. But if the purpose is okay, I don't know. So another example is um, here you see that if you talk about non-profit, these companies are actually, uh, they don't like this begging thing anymore. And this is a guy who wanted to make um, mobile calling available in Bangladesh. So he had a dream and he wanted to improve the 
productivity of the people in Bangladesh. So he said, why, do not, uh, um, why shall I not offer them a uh, calling for a very low um, amount of money? And the question is, how did he do that? Well, here you have the villagers, and they want to call, so they want mobile connectivity. But how are you going to make work if they don't have any money? Well, they can't own a mobile phone. So what he figured out is that there are phone ladies in the village who have a close connection to them, and they can hold the phone, so this is the distribution channel, and they have an income opportunity. And, of course, you need to have the infrastructure there, so with Grameen Bank, they got microcredits, and Telenor was funding it, and this is a new business model. And that's how he made it work. So it's... The results were that this lady, this phone lady, she has a daily income of two to three dollars. And you see that more than 250,000 women are retailing s telephone ser services. And you see that the revenue rate is really, really big. And the question is, if you look at this business model, then you see actually a triple layer. You see that there's also social and envi environmental benefit. And of course, that also costs, but this is very important. So I think this is a very good example of a business model beyond profit, meaning profit for a purpose, and uh, yes, they make a profit, otherwise it's not sustainable. Yes. Um, a very short story about the book, because um, it's also, we think it's a business model beyond profit, because we didn't have any budget, and our brand, Alex from uh, Switzerland, was a known, no known guy, but we wanted to create a very cool toolbox for clients. So we thought, let's listen to what clients want, and what clients don't want is a very fat book, which you can't read. So the other thing is that you want content that you can do something with tomorrow. And the other thing is that we thought we would like to create something Apple-ish. So our inspiration was Apple. And what we did is uh, we hired a designer, and he made the most coolest book ever, I think, because he said, I want to make a cookbook that manages to start cooking the business model right away. And this is some of the content. What we did is we put the online hub together. Of course, it's IT, but it's for free. And we asked, we invited people for free, the first 10, and then in the end, 470 people from 45 countries joined all over the world. And we asked them to pay for that. So they helped us, but we asked them to pay. And in the beginning, we charged $24. But then a lot of people came, so we thought, like, yeah, maybe raise the price a bit, because otherwise there are too many names in the book and it's too complicated. So in the end, four people paid $243 to contribute to our book. <laughs> and then we put it on um, Amazon, and Amazon is very expensive because it costs you 55% of margin and you need to pay it yourself, the, the production cost, and you need to ship it yourself. And Amazon tells you when to ship it. Crazy. So then we ended up at the second uh, place. So we thought, wow, this is cool. And then we thought, like, we want to, didn't want to make profit because we thought, let's put it out for free so that people everywhere around the world will use it. And you don't need to read because it's a very visual book. And now we sold the rights to Wiley, so we don't need to care about it ourselves. But what is important is that this business model paid for the, uh, the goods uh, already before. Well, I have some tips and tricks. Is that What is important to know is that you see the life shelf of business models is getting shorter and shorter. Yeah, this is a family picture. Sorry for that. <laughs> and the other thing is that you have to understand what is going on. And important is then that you, if you start model your model together, you can create this common language. And that's very important that you talk about the same topic. And then the thing is that it, there's not one solution anymore. So if you start creating your model, create some prototypes. Because if you create some prototypes, then you can test which one will work best. And what you see in practice is that most of the new future business models are enabled by IT. So I think there's a good link for you guys in the room to connect with IT. And what is interesting is that if you create this model, can you find one that goes beyond profit? And this is a picture of a school that we support. Um, and these guys make f uh, photos for our uh, presentations. And we give them money for that. 
That was it. Thank you. I have one question. I have one question. Uh, the book is sold out at the moment, but I have one book here. And this book is for the person who tells me who deserves the book the most in this room. So. <laughs> you have already won. Yeah? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Because he works for traders, maybe he can, he can give <laughs> them ideas. Do we agree, or is there one other? Then I'm very happy to give you the book. Yeah. We got time for one question. Is there? Okay. So thank you very much, Patrick. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.